third example we're going to discuss today is image convolution. Image convolution is operation that modifies the value of each pixel in the image uh, using the information from its neighboring pixels. So think about convolution is an uh, operation of filtering. We apply some kind of filters to the original image. And these filters define the influence of neighboring pixels. For example, we can apply a blurring filter. And in a blurring filter, we essentially take the weighted average of neighboring pixels so that we can reduce the large differences between the pixel values, especially the neighboring pixels. Now let's look at this example. We're showing a source image, and we want to apply some kind of a filter, uh, and then we will want to get a filtered image. So on the left side, we're showing here 5 by 6 uh, source image, and the values in each of these grid boxes representing the grayscale or color scale of that pixel. So we can see here we uh, have a small region in the original image, uh, 3 by 3. And we have uh, these uh, values uh, in these corresponding pixels in this 3 by 3 region. And this here, uh, this is the filter we want to apply. So essentially what we want to do is we want to use this 3 by 3 filter and we want to perform um, this uh, element-wise uh, multiplication on this pixel and then use the sum of all these uh, multiplication results and that will give us the uh, value of this um, new pixel in the filtered image. So look at this center of this 3x3 three three region and we're going to use uh, the neighbors of this pixel. Now we have eight neighbors and we're going to multiply the values of these pixels with this corresponding location in a filter and then we're going to do the summation on the values of all these products. So that's what we uh, see here, this uh, minus one times one that's taking this pixel with the corresponding pixel in a filter. And this is 0 times 4, that's taking this value here and with this pixel. So and so, we have all nine um, pairs of multiplications, and then we sum the uh, multiplication results all together, and eventually we get the value 7. So 7 will be the uh, final value at this location in the filtered image. As you can see, we will have to uh, apply such filtering operations for every single image. And because the way the pixels are organized, and it's fine that we can do such multiplication on these um, you know, different pixel locations, but there's, uh, there are certain pixel locations we have to be very careful especially those close to the boundary. Because when we look at these pixels, it does not have all eight neighboring pixels. Because it's close to the boundary, some of the locations are actually out of boundary. So you cannot get all the three uh, neighboring, all the eight neighboring pixels to apply the filter. And not only filtering operations, other kinds of image processing operations also have to take that into consideration. Okay, we show here several example filters. And we have the original image, the cute cat. And we can apply different filters to uh, come up with different uh, effects on the original image. We can do blurring. This is the blurred picture. We can also do edge detection. So this here shows you know, what are the uh, edges that appear in the original image. The difference between these filters uh, is actually 
residing in the values in the uh, filtering uh, region, in the filter uh, um, pixel region. We'd like to first show a C implementation of the image convolution function. Uh, we're seeing here uh, there are two uh, outer for loops, and these two outer for loops illustrate over the source image. Uh, it will go through every single pixel uh, from the x dimension, what the width dimension, and then the height dimension. Um, and then we will apply the filter to that pixel. In the third loop here, we essentially go through the uh, elements in a filter. Uh, we can see here we're going through the half of the filter width, assuming the filter is a uh, square shape, uh, which is typically the case. Uh, so we'll uh, choose the half size on the x dimension, and then a half size on the y dimension will go uh, go left and the right centering around the center pixel that we're working on. And we're gonna you know, um, do the multiplication and then do the summation to accumulate the products of all the pairs of uh, multiplications. Um, at the end, we'll output the new pixel value into uh, this uh, uh, resulting pixel in the final image. We'd like to talk about a uh, new data structure in OpenCL. It's called image. Image is a abstraction of images. It's an OPEC type uh, that's quite different from an integer, from a pointer. Uh, it cannot be viewed directly uh, through points uh, in a device. So you don't really uh, read the uh, individual bytes in that image data structure. It's internally maintained as a multi-dimensional structure, and we'll see that how we can read values from it and, and write values to it. It is used primarily for image uh, data types, so it is not suitable for other arbitrary structures, for example, integer values, integer arrays, or pointers, etc. The reason we have this image data type uh, partly because that we uh, have this image uh, data processed in graphics processors. Uh, there are a lot of uh, operations that are specific to image data. And uh, these operations sometimes require long instruction sequences, which can be done very efficiently on these graphics processors. So it's uh, uh, helpful to have such image type which can be specifically processed, optimized by graphics processors. As a programmer, you can specify the image format uh, in the terms of channels, and also we can specify the types of those uh, pixel values, could be float or integer values, etc. Similar to buffers, we can create image objects. Uh, so in this uh, slide, I want to show uh, for this image convolution example uh, how we create contacts, connect cubes, and source image and output image uh, filters, etc. And remember, we need to create such image objects on the device side so we can uh, have the device, uh, the OpenCL computing uh, units, to read the pixels from these image objects and then write the new pixels uh, to a uh, output image object. Let's assume this uh, convolution filter is 7 by 7. Uh, so the filter size is 7 by 7. We now define the uh, format of the image. Uh, we will instantiate a format a variable, which is CL image format, and we'll assign uh, the order and data type. And then we can create the image. We now use a 2D image. Uh, so you can use CL create image 2D uh, and provide the context, provide the format of the image object you want to create, the dimensions of the image, and uh, other um, default parameters related to events. So at this point, you now have a source image buffer, which is going to be on the device side. 
Similarly, you can create a output image object uh, using the same format and width. You can then create the filter, which is a regular buffer object. Uh, so we do CL create buffer, uh, providing the context, uh, providing the size of the filter, uh, and then we can then use it uh, as a regular buffer on the device side. In order for the image convolution to work, the first thing we will have to do now is to um, copy the image data and the filter data to the device. So for the image object, we'll use a new API CL in queue write image as opposed to CL in queue write buffer. Uh, for the uh, CL write image, it's taking similar parameters as the CL write buffer. Mm -hmm. Basically, the queue uh, object, the source image buffer on the device, and then the source image uh, that uh, has been read from the image file. You can also specify the offset that you want the image to be copied to in the image object, uh, also the elements per dimension. And with providing this uh, width and height of the image to specify the size of the image. We use here CL in write buffer to copy the 7x7 filter to the device. Now I want to introduce uh, a very interesting object called OpenCL Sampler. Sampler is basically a object that is used to describe how to access an image. Uh, let's look at this API call. Um, so you use the context as the first argument, and that's to say I want to create this sampler within this context. And then I will say uh, whether this uh, coordinates are normalized. Uh, typically, you don't use a normalized uh, coordinates unless you are dealing with these uh, fraction numbers as coordinates. So you can say um, CL uh, normalized coordinates uh, will be a CL force. The addressing mode defines how the image coordinates are handled uh, when the coordinates are out of range. It is very useful for image data because you're dealing with uh, the um, pixels that are close or on the border of the image. And then when you do filtering, uh, then chances are you will be needing some neighboring pixels from the outside of the boundary. Now, this addressing mode defines how we can address that uh, case when that happens. Filtering mode uh, is to specify the filter that needs to be applied uh, when the uh, coordinates to that falls into uh, between the pixels. Here is, is an example that we're going to use in our convolution um, operation. So the sampler is created. We choose not to use normalized coordinates, uh, and we choose to use uh, clamp to edge for the case that if a pixel falls out of bounds, we will use the value of the border of the image. And we'll use uh, CL filter nearest to access the closest pixel to a coordinate uh, if the coordinates lies between. Now, this is the kernel function. So we have the kernel function name, convolution, which takes uh, input image, which is a 2D image object. The output image is a 2D uh, image object. And we have a constant uh, float filter, uh, which we'll use uh, to store the filter values. And then we provide the width of the filter and also the sampler object. Now this read only and write only are reserved keywords uh, that you can use to specify the properties of these uh, objects. And for the uh, filter, we know it's uh, going to be read only, so yeah, we declare it as a constant, which can then allow the uh, OpenCL runtime to uh, put these filter objects into the specific constant region in the global memory. In the body of this kernel function, 
the first several steps is to obtain the work item. Similarly, uh, we will use get global ID zero, get global ID one to uh, obtain these indices uh, at these two dimensions. Next, we're gonna calculate the half width of the filter, uh, which will be used for uh, memory location indexing. Now the next line you see here is float for sum equals uh, brackets zero, 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 zero. This is the first time we see a vector data type. Float4 defines a four element vector of float types. So the sum is a vector with four floating point numbers, and it will assign the initial values to these four numbers, all zeros. The reason we want this is that uh, the way we operate the image data is that we uh, will read the data items from the image object. It will actually return a vector of four uh, floating point numbers. So we can perform these uh, arithmetic operations on those floating point number vectors very easily using uh, this floating, uh, this four element floating point vector. We'll see in the next slide. Well, uh, initialize the filter index and then we will um, declare a variable as uh, another vector this time is a for a two element integer uh, which is called uh, coordinates this will be the coordinates for accessing the image um, object then we're going to iterate uh, through the filter rows remember we're taking half width so we're going to go from the kind of left side of the width and to the right side of the width, also uh, to the upper side of the um, filter, and also to the um, lower half of the filter. Uh, we look at you know the center pixel of that uh, filter. So we'll use coordinates.y to uh, record the current um, location of the pixel uh, in the whole picture in the whole image plus the uh, filter uh, location uh, this I is a as we said earlier that it's a um, iteration variable that will track the individual pixels within the filter and this another for loop is to iterate over the columns so we have two dimensions and similarly we calculate uh, the coordinates of uh, the other dimension. Now, we declared pixel as a four element floating point vector because we're gonna use this read image f to obtain the uh, pixel information from the image object. And the way we do that is to supply uh, the image object, the sampler, which defines the uh, way we uh, want the image to be accessed uh, when there's a um, pixel uh, falling in the boundary or the coordinates are between pixels. And also we provide the coordinates. So after this function is returned and the pixel will be a, a vector of four and the uh, pixel information will be in this vector. Because at the time we create this image object, we said this is a single channel image so only one of the four uh, elements in the vector represents the pixel value, and which is the x coordinate. So what we do here is we're going to use the actual value from the original image, multiply it with the uh, pixel in the filter, and then we're going to uh, accumulate that to the sum.x. And every time we do this, uh, we will in the filter index so we can move on to the next pixel in the filter. So overall these uh, two for loops will go through every pixel in the filter and we're gonna uh, use the um, pixels of the neighboring um, we're gonna use the information of the neighboring pixels to multiply with the filter uh, pixel value then do the accumulation. 
At the end, we will uh, use this Write Image app to store the updated pixel value in this output image. So we're going to use uh, this uh, image object, supply the uh, coordinates, and also provide the new pixel value for that coordinate. OK, so that was the uh, kernel. And assuming that the uh, kernel is completed successfully, then the next step is uh, to read the image back. So we'll use CL in queue read image because we know we uh, are dealing with the image uh, object. Uh, it's quite similar with in queue read buffer. Uh, so it takes the command queue as the first argument, the output image object, uh, CL true to indicate that we have to block this read uh, when this uh, read operation is completed. Uh, we provide the original uh, origin and region parameters that we use for creating the image object. And then this is the uh, buffer on the host side that we use to store the, the image data. 